start recording and that's it right all right there we go all right guys what's going on man welcome to another uh monday prep as you can see i'm uh, getting some really really volatile moves today man like i don't know if any other chart did this but look at what happened with eagle and i was on this puppy man like wow 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 and then I'm thinking, you know, it was the whole market, but I don't see no other coin dropping the way Eagle did. So me and uh, Astro are trying to scratch our heads right now, trying to figure out why. Yeah, look, do not one drop though. And I mean, the reason I got on Eagle was because it was a top gainer too, mind you, right? So you guys know how I feel about that, right? Like those uh, top gainers are pretty hard to short. Um, I've gotten burnt a lot of times trying to short the top gainer, but I know a lot of these other analysts that's their strategy, man. They actually, I'm starting to notice a lot of these other analysts, they love to go for the top gainers because they short the hell out of it, right? Like they try to really, really try to find the top of these things. And I mean, fuck, if you shorted this bad boy, you just, this was almost, I think, 300% candle on 50X or 40X, almost 300% candle. Nasty, man. Nasty, nasty, nasty drop. Um, But like I said, thank goodness for that. Uh stop loss on entry right you know i think i got in around here got a little excited of course with my luck you know this happens right like every time i, get, I swear i get into something it goes fucking straight down before it performs and and you know i'm starting to make peace with it already because you know i was gonna get upset early i was like damn dude are you fucking kidding me like yet again the same you know me getting in and then it just comes straight down but you know again this week this month has been fire man i've been throwing out some pretty good calls i think i only have like two losses out of like shit like 15 calls or something almost 20 calls um so i've been tearing it up man i've been on it i've been on it um and this one performed right like it, it gave us what we needed over a hundred percent it land it landed on tp1 but i also felt that man when i threw out this trade because we were look if you zoom out more we're in a bullish channel Right. So it was either we were going to break this bullish channel. And I told you guys, man, whenever you see a bullish channel like this and you get a break off from the resistance top part of your channel, dude, like, oh, my God, guys, I've seen fucking big candles every time I see that because you're already in the bullish momentum, mind you. Right. So then you're just adding even more gas to the fire, per se. Right. If you're breaking above you know, resistance line on a bullish channel. So I've seen that a lot. And, you know, even with this trade, I, I shit you not, man. And I probably should have wrote it so you guys could even believe me. But I really felt like we were only going to probably see TP1 because it was at the end of our bullish channel, right? And mind you, we had this drawn out before, right? Before we even did all of this, right? We got in here. So this, you know, we didn't even see this. But look how almost exactly it one rejected off of TP number one and off of that trend line right so that's almost a double whammy for you uh for you bears right there it would have been a nice short to hit that on um and i mean shit look it like literally even broke the channel and everything uh still in that demand zone right so it's still showing that demand zone we had drawn out was a uh, pretty clutch you know went a little bit under it but it's still you know safe to say that it's actually pretty really close and it's building from there right so um you know good charting on this one it played out to the t we got our TP number one. We exited, stop loss at entry. And again, guys, this is why I do that, right? Because you just never know, right? Like, what are the chances of us? I mean, what? Fuck, this was up almost 130% at this point, right? And then the very next candle, <laughs> you know, you see stuff like this. This is why, you know, I'm, I'm big on setting rules. I'm even bigger on setting that stop loss at entry, man. I, I you know... It, it saves you guys a headache. It saves me a headache. So I know it's going to save you guys a headache too when you guys are trading using that, right? And again, you just never know, man. Like as much as it looked, when I was looking at this candle, I'm like, oh my God, it's going to go up to TP number eight. You know, like <laughs> it was just pushing that much. But look, man, the complete reversal, right? Like a nasty, nasty reversal that, you know, anybody who longed anywhere in here, I'm pretty sure they got stopped out. Even our stop loss would have been hit if we never hit tp right like look that shit literally went right to our stop loss and went back up so that would have been a pretty pretty bad loss if we didn't grab profits on it already and if we didn't place that stop loss on entry so again i just wanted to go over that real fast um today's play i'll probably look at something a little later on again tonight um but yeah let's let's look at bitcoin man. and again i wrote bitcoin had a drop because this, i was assuming it did or just off of this drop right so i'm gonna need to go back and correct that and just really put eagle um but yeah bitcoin didn't bitcoin is still doing its thing and i'm a little shocked because again i'm still trying to understand i'm me and then asa we're trying to understand that drop man that drop like really makes no sense to us right now 
you know, with everything still, you know, going sideways or pushing up, if that, right? Like for Eagle to drop the way it did, it was, I think, more than 3 4%. So it is what it is, but whatever. All right, so Bitcoin, guys. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Well, 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 right? We're, <laughs> we're back in that zone, in that main, main zone that we've been talking about for weeks. Weeks. This is why I love doing these Monday preps because every time we go back to it, we can really, you know, digest what we were thinking last week right and see if our thoughts and our you know theories played out right and and this is why i love doing this stuff man because look i mean you know we had our supplies on right we played the short on this and we printed right i think it was two shorts that we were able to get off of this which worked out to the t right this was the last real zone we were looking at now guys i i you know what fuck it i'm gonna say it we're, we're in a bull market you know if you don't believe it, you know, you will soon, right? When you start seeing Bitcoin at 34, 35, 36, you're going to really start feeling like we're in a bull market. And then I'm, you know, I'm saying that with confidence now because the one thing that I was looking for for us to be back in a bull market was to get back into this zone. Now, I'm really, really want to say 30K to be exact, right? To really feel like we're back officially in a bullish market. Um, 30k because again, 30k was that ground level where when we were up at 60k and you know 69 and all this shit up here, 45, the 50s, the 55 levels. Every time it dropped down to 30k, it would always get a nice bounce up, right? History repeats itself. And if you ever played along, um, and I think I did at one time around here before we came here, right? Like I remember playing it once and it printed, right? It gave us this, but then you know, obviously it did what it did because the whole market just kind of collapsed at that point. It went to shit. Um, but it's it's a universal strong support line, right? This is why I want to say when things did go bad, um, you know, once we had that final break at 30k, we really saw that dump, right? We really went all the way down to 15 and then all these levels and just kept going sideways. And there was a lot of scare in the market because people thought Bitcoin was gonna go down to 12k, right? And again, I always say it's still a possibility. I would never X that out. You know, as soon as I saw that we broke that 30k, I was always a strong believer that it would never break that, right? So once I I saw that we did break um it made me a believer of anything is possible right and just so I, the same way i can say that you know what we're at 27 right now yeah but we can be tomorrow or the next day at 12k it can fucking happen guys it, it, it can happen believe it or not you know uh is it happening right now hell no man we're having some really really strong bullish momentum have a little bullish channel going on and look guys this is what i was just talking about with the last play right kind of a little bullish channel going on right able to see your higher lows i mean your higher highs touch intersect and even right here you got lower highs going on well look at our little breakout what two three down i didn't even notice this till today right like one two three when was this friday friday we broke out that's super bullish to me man super bullish to me and the only reason i'm thinking we're not fucking skyrocketing to 30s and six and all these other numbers is because this is that wall now, right? Like now this strong demand zone isn't a demand anymore because it was invalidated when this happened, right? But again, I like to keep these things because I feel like, you know, even though they invalidate once they break, they tend to still play around these zones, right? Like I want to say, let me see if I can find it. Like even here, right? Like here it invalidated on that drop, right? And invalidated this demand zone, but yet right here, look where it rejected exactly in that zone, right? So this is why I like to keep it, man. I don't really believe too much in that whole invalidation. On small ones, yes. On bigger daily ones, I really don't, man. I really feel like they still hold their uh their weight. Um, and I've seen it over and over on bigger time frames. These zones really, really hold its, you know, this its structure. So you know, right now we got a bullish channel going on. We broke from above. You know, it's that's good, man. That's a really good sign. And I just mentioned it not too long ago, even before seeing that we actually did it on Bitcoin. So, yeah, I'm bullish, man. I'm fucking hella bullish, right? Like, again, well, hence the past few calls I've been throwing out, right? Like, they haven't been in the best places, you know, pretty risky levels. Even the one, was it today? The Eagle one? That shit was risky, man. Like, it was up there, guys. Like, look at it, you know? We're at the top of our channel, right? Like, I'm calling it here. Only because I screened over to Bitcoin and I saw it that, you know, after it had the rejection, what was it was last night or this morning, it still kind of was showing strong momentum. I'm like, damn, dude, I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin tries to hit 28 again, right? And now that I've seen that breakout from above, now I'm understanding why we are extremely bullish. You know, we broke, man. We're back in the we're back in the zone, pretty much. 
you know, back in our fucking a year ago zone, right? Because it took us a year to go down to the levels we're at, uh, we were at in, in Bitcoin, right? And now we're back, guys. We're back. So I'm excited, man. I'm super excited. I'm still super bullish. Uh, fucking mad. I didn't add to my spots. Oh, when we were at 20K. Um, however, I did pick up Matic around when Bitcoin was at 17K. So I know that shit. Is, and I'm not looking at it. I don't want to look at it. I want to wait. You know, when Bitcoin is back to 50, 60K, that's when I'm going to take a look at that spot and see what Matic did for me, you know. But um, other than that, I mean, shit, man, we're still not out of the waters, right? Like we still, if this is our potential for Bitcoin, then we can still rack up on some of these fucking, um, all coins for your spots, guys. Don't let these, you know, runs discourage you because, and I tell you that shit, guys, because it's, I, I've done it, right? Like, even when we fell right here, right, to like the 1920, I kept hesitating. I'm like, damn, Kenny, I think that 20 level might be that strong support now. Let's start buying some more um, spot. And I hesitated and I did it. And look at where we're at now, right? Like, we just literally just went from almost 19K to fucking 27K in a few days or, or in a few weeks. So maybe it was like about two weeks if that, you know, so wait for a pullback, right? Like wait for a pull. If anything I've learned is not to buy when things are running like this, right? And even when we are running, right? Like we just did, there's always going to be a sell-off guys. So if you guys haven't bought spot yet, wait for a good pullback, man. Like we're going to get it. It's bound to happen, right? It happened to us, you know, a few weeks ago, right? We thought we were like, oh shit, here we go again, right back down to these levels. But no. It didn't happen, right? It's just a sell-off. That's that's fine. As long as we're getting new, uh, higher lows like this, we're going to keep inclining up. You understand? So, And you're going to have sell-offs, right? It's always going to have a point where it gets to the highest point where people just want to take profits, man. And they're smart, right? Like those are people that bought at these low levels, right? Bought at 20K and they're selling at 30K. I, I wouldn't be surprised again if we get a really nice drop at 30K, right? Like that's now the next levels. Mind you, I got to start drawing... My <laughs> my resist my resistance lines up here now because we're we're here guys like we're fucking here man I'm excited dude we're we're here so now I really got to start looking for some resistance levels here you know to start get, grabbing some of these um possible shorts right and again it's only scalping like um, um you know even if we do scalp a nice rejection from here that'll come down to 20k right that'll be a fucking print you know so start looking for some of these levels guys man start looking for your resistance levels you know lines that we're going to start breaking again i just had that one there but i don't want to mess up the ta but again we could still have it there matter of fact you know what and i'll just label these like this that way we know when we come next uh Next Monday prep, we'll see if any of these hit, right? Like, you know, we'll see in the next week or two to see if we actually get to touch any of these levels. And look how I'm putting them. And I'm going to explain to you guys exactly where I'm putting it. But again, my eyes are just fixed for this shit, guys. I do this every day, every, every, every day. I don't just throw up lines and hit this and just throw it up because it looks cute. I'm looking, right? Like, I'm, I'm actually looking for points, right? And I'll go over each line. You know, here's your support right here. Support right here. Support right there, right? A little bit of support right there. Close to it right there. Rejection right there. Perfect line, right? Support, support. A little bit of support action here. Rejection right here. Not much here, right? So again, that's still three. Remember, whenever you guys are looking for these lines, you want a minimum of three to five touches. We have it, right? One, two, three, four. We have almost four. Three uh, support jumps and one rejection right there, right? Boom. This line is solid. Same with this one. Let me see. I think we was right here. We have a nice little, uh, nice little boost up support, support, a little bit of support here before it broke support right there for that nice run up rejection, rejection, and a little bit of rejection, right? One dot right there. One line. Boom. Good line. Next line support here. Rejection there and a little bit higher, right? But perfect rejection right there. Almost perfect rejection right there, right? So now we have a nice strong support. I mean, a resistance. And last but not least, close to here, rejection there, rejection there, rejection here, rejection here. Bit of a support there. There's your lines, guys. Again, I don't throw these shits out just to throw them. Even though I know it probably looks like I'm just throwing these lines up, but my eyes look at everything, man. When I'm looking at these lines, the minute I'm going like this, I'm looking at this, this, this point right here. That's what I look for. I look for consolidation points. You know, that's where you're going to see these things have trouble. And that's why those are my TP lines, right? And this is the main reason I try to take, you know, profits right before we hit TP because I don't trust it. I've seen too many times where if this is my TP, it'll come to right here and uh, come down. 
So what, I'm never supposed to take profits if it doesn't hit exactly TP? Hell no, guys. I'm all about taking profits and trimming and making sure that we grab something off of a play instead of a loss. I don't like losses. You know, I'd rather take a 10% 100 times over losses, you know. That's just that's just the way I am. So again, we're gonna leave these lines. We're gonna see how they uh how they act, right? The next few weeks. Um, if and again, I'm not saying we're going to, right? Like I, you guys know, I don't like doing that shit. Like I I don't know where this market is gonna go. You know, it's just because I'm I'm pretty bullish doesn't mean it's gonna happen, right? Like for all I know, we can get a nasty nasty rejection off of this now supply zone, right? Now it used to be a demand zone. Now it's it's a good it's a fucking supply zone, right? Now this one could turn into a little demand zone. But, you know, we might just get a really nasty rejection off of this, right? So, you know, you just never know. You never know. But if we continue doing what we're doing, which is showing strong, strong bullish momentum, guys, expect these levels to hit because if this thing keeps doing what it's doing and people are buying, right? I'm starting to hear it everywhere I go, guys. When you start hearing people talk about crypto the way they used to before all of this shit happened, you know, you, you got people interested, right? And I was catching people's attention again. So what happens? Oh, shit, damn, look, what? oh, my God, honey, we're back at 30K. Let's drop a few thousand. People are going to buy. They're going to keep buying. They're like, oh, shit, we, we rose back from the dead, right? And then I've heard it like two or three times. Oh, shit, look, hey, Kenny, have you seen crypto? Look, it's, it's coming back. Yeah, no shit, <laughs> I've never left it. You know, this is why I don't leave these things, man, because I know eventually things are going to come back. What goes down must come up and what goes up must come down guys i tell you that every class right it's just like that right especially when it comes to trading so you know wait for that pullback even myself i'm gonna you know i'm telling you guys and i need to really make a mental note of this and write it down because i do want to load up on some fucking more spot man like i i don't think matic is enough for me and i'm not being greedy right like you know i've been doing this for three years i finally just bought uh <clears throat> spot now because you know we, we were so fucking low man that it was like time you know when i started crypto and all of this it was around here right and i got to see all of this but i just didn't know what the hell spot was i was you know i wasn't really interested in buying and then when i finally did start to learn about it i think we were just so high in the 50k area that i was like you know i'm not gonna buy up here right i'm not gonna you know and thank god i didn't right because look at where we ended up so patience right patience is key we're still under this main main and i want to put a star on this shit and lock it up because i don't ever want to erase this and this is a good good zone guys like trust me on this look at it you know you'll see the reaction i'm telling you i wouldn't be surprised if we get a nice little pullback from it right before it does and then when it does break you know again i wouldn't be surprised if we see a really really nice run um pushing up you know to wherever the fuck the next resistance you know the next resistance might be on bitcoin um but i'm bullish guys i'm bullish i'm bullish um you know, and you know, guys know I don't say that much. I usually either say I'm neutral or just, you know, seeing what the next few days, uh, you know, comes out with. But right now I am bullish because we got up, broke out of this bullish channel from above. And you guys just heard me, you know, talk about it a few minutes ago. The only thing that scares me is that, yeah, man, we're, we're at that fucking zone, right? And it happens to be right where it broke, right? Where it will give you enough like it did today. Maybe you go back up to the 28s and 29s. But then again, you know, I expect some kind of pullback here. Because whoever bought at 15 or 16, they're going to want to sell something at 30. I guarantee you that shit. Um, so, yeah, guys, for the most part, I'm pretty bullish this week. Um, we'll see what the next few days hold, right? If you want to look at um, what a possible short on this could be, right? We can grab this line right here. Two, hold on. Let me turn it gold. Let me just put entry on it. Right? I'm looking at this line right here because... Just like we had our last zone, right? Which was this one. I, you know, I was trying to put a line where... And remember that day, guys? It was crazy, right? Like, it literally, that day that we had that um, short on this, it was this candle, was it? Right? Like, I think it was this candle or this one. It literally grabbed it, like, literally wicked and grabbed it and went down, right? So, it was it was a good entry on that. Um, I'm trying to find the same. And again, I'm bullish, but I still want to eat on these shorts, right? Like, I'm learning that, you know, you got to take what the market can give you. And if we can get another rejection... Even though, look how close it was, man. I wouldn't be surprised if it already did it. But we'll look at it the next few days and see how it acts, right? That This might have been it, you know, the rejection of the pullback that, I spe that I'm speaking of, right? So um, it's close enough. If it doesn't and if it does give us uh, 28, 784, you can bet your ass that I'm going to look to short that. 
you know, with a tight stop loss. Well, that's not too tight, right? Because 30K <laughs> is a fucking pretty big stop loss. But if we do enter here, man, we're looking at a probably DCA at around 29. And then, yeah, stop loss right above 30. Or maybe I'll go back and draw this zone over that day on a different chart and see if I'm missing anything, right? But for the most part, yeah, guys, let's look at this as a possible short. I already set an alert on it. I'm going to write it out in case I forget. Possible short on BTC. And I definitely want it to ping me the minute it touches. Possible short. All right. So, yeah. So, for the most part, like I said, I am pretty bullish, man. I'm just, you know, we're also at a resistance zone, man. And, um, we obviously can still get rejected here. So, you know, we'll see. We'll play it by ear. We'll keep looking at how the days, you know, transpire. Let's also look at our spy, right? Damn, I can't believe this shit. <laughs> still fucking can't believe that. Let's look at spy real fast. See what spy did today and how it looks for the week and for the month. Daily. Bang, 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 bang. Is this the right chart? No, this is not the right chart. Where's my spy chart? Hold on. Spy. That's my spy chart. There we go. All right. So last time we were looking at this. Let me go to the weekly. See. Okay. Yeah. You can see a little better on the weekly. Nah, I like the daily. All right. So last time we were looking at this, you know, we were a little worried, right? Because one, we got a nasty, pretty nasty rejection off of. And it's always, I feel like that, always that 14, 12, 14, 15 area. It always has some kind of trouble around it. And the 410, I want to say. I always remember those numbers for some reason on spot. Um, but yeah, we had a bit of trouble here. You know, it created a small little supply zone. Um, actually, yeah, yeah. It was off of this. You have some more resistance here. Um, it created a little supply zone, which gave it a nasty rejection, right? And, of course, I think there was just some news going around. around. You know, I'm not big on news, guys. And you guys, and you guys know that, right? I'm a chartist, you know. But I do see that sometimes news happens to play around the same time. There's rejection levels, which is so fucking weird to me, man. But it's, it's there. And we've seen it. And we've talked about it plenty of times, right? So I know there was some news um, brought it down a little more. We were scared. I think we were looking at it at this point. That's what it was, right? We were looking at it around this point and we were saying how we might just fall right back into this channel. And it would have sucked, man, because we almost lasted about a year in this channel, right? We had like 368 days, so just about a year in this bearish channel, which wasn't a bad one because it still gave you nice run-ups, man. Like this from here to here, you know, that's not just a day or two, right? Like that's fucking almost two or three weeks of a good run before it's, you know, it's still just verifies that it's in a bearish channel and it still shows you like um lower lower highs i want to say right but you know so we were there we were actually there you know we broke out we were saying that you know with a nice breakout man our crypto market should see these nice numbers because you know both these markets man they have a lot of similarities to themselves and i told you guys when you see bitcoin running for some reason you'll you'll really see spy doing the same thing man and look you know spy closed green today right well look at our market it's pretty green with some uh nice little runs you know Except for Eagle, ran and then it dropped. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's still closed green, right? We're still holding above that trend line, man, which is pretty good. You know, this was scaring me right here. I was hoping we would come back and we actually did, which is fantastic. It's good for our market. Um, This line, I know, seems to be a little strong support, too. I had it there for a reason and I haven't... Uh, I haven't taken it off because, look, we, get, we seem to get really nice bounce off. This is what is it, the 390 line? Right? Yeah, that's a 390. So we seem to get really nice hits off of this. Like even today, look, look, the wick was right there and it just built straight off of that and brought it up to 390, 374 and closed. So, um, you know, I guess if obviously if we can hold this support, right, then I think, let me see. Now we can probably start building. This is a supply. It's not even a demand. I want to say some kind of bit of a demand here, right? Because now this goes back to being... A supply zone this one goes to be in a demand zone so you know boxing in right consolidation not bad it's better than dropping i'll tell you that much i'll take consolidation any day right so you know that's what big i mean excuse me that's what spy has been doing right now as you can see after we broke the channel which was great i think it should have been a really good sign for it to go back especially a retest man i think this we all kind of thought this was the retest and it did it played out for two days before again just getting really nasty rejections off these supply zone um 
right now we're smack dab in the middle guys so you know it's a flip of a coin pretty much the next few days right we got one two three four five about four or five days left you know might get a nice little four or five days run up to you know resistance and then ping pong back down right and again that's not a bad thing right like it's consolidation is good consolidation just shows that you know your buyers and your sellers you know that they're having time right they're having a tough time trying to figure out what way they want to push the market so you know consolidation isn't bad uh, again i'll take that any day over dropping you know going down to shit because even when it consolidates guys you know i, I show you guys this you can still hit these zones you know you can still grab these longs from your demand zones you can still hit these shorts from your supply zones right so you know whatever the market throws at us we can hit it man we can hit it if we really you know look for it and we, if we try and again there's just so many charts man for us to play with that you know now if we really want to find the trade we can find it right so so yeah guys uh spy smack dab in the middle um pretty neutral on that obviously right i mean you know it's not, yeah it has to be neutral on this one it's literally like smack dab in the middle man so we'll look at it the next few days. Hopefully, again, if we do get a nice two, three days of run up, that should give our market a really nice push. And maybe we'll get those fucking 30K that I'm praying for, man. But yeah, like, I mean, if you really look at both charts, right? Like, you know, if this pushes, man, and it has a wall around here, right? 4408, which is fine if it hits, right? We're at 393. That's still a good, what, seven, almost 14, 15 point move. You know, that's still great, right? And it'll, whatever, it'll reject up there. Well, you know what? We still have space from Bitcoin being at 27 to 30, almost the same shit, right? And then look, this is a nice little area to look at for rejection, right? Because look how it just consolidated there before it broke, really broke down to shit. Um, you know, but you have a nice little boxed area right here. That if you want to kind of push that way, you know, to look at it for guidance, you can, but we'll just leave it like this. <laughs> For now and again you can just tell that if it does come up here man it's gonna be a something right and again you know it's 30k level right like that's there's your three there's your three point move or uh, three thousand point move right up there man if we can get back up to these levels so you know hey i, I shit man i want to say bullish i want really want to say bullish um the next few days knock on wood you know if everything continues to go the way it's going then yes I, i'm pretty bullish if not then you know we do the old switcheroo man you know that's why we we practice shorts and longs right we don't get too comfortable with just doing one because when you only do one then you get stuck when you play both sides of the coin right of the spectrum then you you, you can't be left right you're not gonna you know, if you're only doing longs, you're going to be sitting down during the bull market the whole time. And that shit could last months. It like just lasted us a year. So you're telling me that whole year you didn't trade, right? Like, I want you guys to practice both ways, man. Always practice both ways. You know, even if you're paper trading, man, you know, try to get comfortable with playing these resistance, your, you know, rejections and your nice support bounces. And that'll get you, you know, accustomed to kind of playing both ways. And then again, you know, whatever other formula you guys want to add to it. Whether it's different theories as far as smart money concept, Elliott Wave, you know, all that fun stuff, price action, or mixing it with indicators, right? That's always another good thing, man. You know, you can just mix it up whatever way you guys want and whatever you guys, you know, feel comfortable with. But um, that's what we're here for, man. We're here to help you guys find that. And whenever you guys have questions, just please feel free to ask us. We're always in chat or DM us if you don't want to talk to us in chat and we'll be more than happy to help. Um yeah guys that's pretty much it man i just saw again market uh monday press man i love to go over bitcoin i love to see what you know the past week did i love for us to kind of dissect and give us you know a nice little insight on what could happen and you know come back to it next week and see if it plays out the way we you know we predicted um and i think we just covered that with bitcoin with spy um if you guys have any other charts you want me to go over i will be more than happy to if not i think my man tex is still here you look at the chat and um he will be doing some live trading oh i think he just wants to go over a few things live with you guys um and if he comes across a trade i think he said he'll throw it out there for you guys so if you guys want to join yeah, him I'm mostly gonna be doing forex forex exactly there you go forex perfect yeah. um yeah I'll, I'll have i'll have my headset on and I'll, I'll join you guys for sure i gotta run out and do something but i'll have my headset on and i'll be listening paying attention yo what's up What's up? What's up, Mr. Sexy? Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> How you doing, brother? Pretty good. Yo, dude, that Neo prediction, man. Wow. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. 
Wow. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I, it was doing the, the same thing with, with the SMP yesterday. I'm, I don't understand why it does it, but I end up hitting the, the call. Nice. Well, the good shit, man. Hey, you want to see what happened with EGLD real quick before he goes into the Forex? I can I can break down the liquidity for you if you want. You want to just jump on that for two seconds? I know a lot of these guys were on it. Uh, I don't want to like step on anyone's toes if or anything, but uh, go Tex, for it. Tex, is that okay for a few minutes just to look at yeah, Eagle? Dude, I'm only doing it because I got nothing else to do in the hotel room, bro. Love you. <laughs> I, I fucking love you, man. All right, so I'm gonna hop off. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna hop off. Go ahead, uh, illuminate it. Light us up with this eagle, man. I want to know. And matter of fact, right. let me let me tag. <clears throat> Let me tag this dude. He'll probably be interested in that. You can see me streaming. Hopefully, you see the retro wave in the background. <laughs> I got to get my nanobots. Up. I got to go into bot mode real quick. Oh, shit. Whoops. <laughs> Stupid, but. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, I joined and you decided to go. What's up? What's up, boo? All right. What's up? I joined and you decided to go. <laughs> oh, you just, you just, bro, we were here since six o'clock, bro. <laughs> 40, bro. Oh. <laughs> nah. No, but listen, the Illum Illuminator is going to break down um Eagle for us right now, man. We were just, I want fucking All Astro right. to join us because he was talking about it earlier too with us. But go ahead, do your thing, brother. The EGLD is basically, you know, why did it have that dump out of nowhere? Well, first of all, Everything is a trap in this game, so you got to look at things as traps and always protect your entry at all times. That's a given, but uh, yeah, if we go into high block capital, this is like giving you heat maps of where the like fire is located, so to speak, and where the crispiness of where people's <laughs> liquidation <laughs> points are. Like so if you, if you look at this right here, we're going to zoom in. You previously had this. It tells you down here the cumulative liquidation levels delta. And you had $52 million imbalance. Oh, that's in longs liquidity. But as they, that was as they were spiking up to grab all these. This is 0.8 million. So that's 800K here. And you can see it kind of stacks in terms of the trades being open. And these little bubbles are where they're where their liquidation points are and you could see where they opened them and so basically there was a bunch of shorts up here which they came and grabbed and once they grabbed them all you had a huge amount of longs now developing here so you have you know a 700k guy another 700k guy and these bubbles above so the idea of this a lot of people like to mistake green candles and red candles as support and resistance but if anything it becomes a dead weight that works against you so you started to develop 50, 60 million dollars imbalance in longs which they immediately came and chewed into and so all of these uh these guys are essentially fair game and so they they just induced those guys to to remain in and spiked up and grabbed them and you could see when you go to the comprehensive image it's like thick pink down here so mm -hmm. once they grabbed all the blue all the shorts above then they have nothing left to do but to come grab all the pink and so now you're imbalanced 62 million to short liquidity so the most immediate zone from where we're at an egld would be here like so you're right at the black line so you got this 1.73 million guy, 1.63 million, these, these little bubbles up here that they could just V-shape recovery up and grab for these, you know, FOMO short guys. And that's basically what, what happens is, you know, you can kind of step into the liquidity and see exactly where, who opens what trade and for what amount. And if I can see this, then, you know, the market makers have even more insidious tools at their disposal. Course, which is why weekend trading is like you know its own kind of can of worms that you have to take care of and that's about it yeah brother so. thank you for that man i appreciate that yeah, that's dope man i like that i like that i want to get a little <laughs> i want to get a little more Bro, can you show us btc oh yeah i can do that too you want to see btc all right hold up can i saw somebody push a chart and 
there was a lot of liquidation at 30k. So that's so, why I'm like, I, I want to hop yeah, in the long. This is the BTC right now. So I was looking at how they're like, I've been calling how they come up to get these bubbles as they induce them. Like back here, for example, this guy opened up a $270 million trade down Jeez. as it was dropping. Oof. And then so they played with with putting him at a loss, putting him into profit, putting him at a break even. Wait, and, and then the they just came. the bubble? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see where they opened it. So that bubble is their liquidation point, but where they opened it was here at 27, oh. one, one. So I can see exactly if uh. he's underwater or in profit at whatever time and whether they're targeting them based off of it being stacked at certain levels like above this. and below. So when it was back here, I was able to see, like, okay, this triple tap is going to break to the upside. It's likely going to come to this dude. And then it just went right up to that dude. And then it chills out for a bit because once it clears that dude, then it releases that liquidity and exits trades. But then you also have people doing the same thing on the other side. So you have bubble longs opening up over here. And then they just, in the Asian session yesterday, just chewed into all the, the late coming longs at 100x and all that. And they only they went down to a 618 region and bounced off that. And now you're, you're paving the way for more short liquidity, even though we are in balance to longs. There is this region of open trades of shorts right here up at 2864. It starts to get a little bit thin, but relatively speaking beyond that point, but a guaranteed idea would be 2864. I was talking about that yesterday in terms of like a region it might come up to spike out. Uh, overall though, on the one minute time frame, this is the one minute. So the one minute time frame is a $9 billion imbalance to longs. So this could be uh, <coughs> something to come back to. But that seems like a lot of money, but actually if you go to if you go to the heat map here, you can see like a uh, larger time frame. For example, if we go to the seven day, well, seven can you day. explain to me? My bad for cutting you off, but yeah, I just up? want to understand what, like, <clears throat> why is there sometimes more um, liquidations in the seven day um, time frame, but like in the daily or I don't know what, there's less. Because you're you're looking well, it shouldn't get less, but the value over here on the left changes from five billion to ten to twenty to thirty to forty as you go to higher time frame. So that color is going to change, but the amount oh, that's there. Why? Because there's more money we're looking at. So basically, here is looking at minutia in the millions. So these little uh -huh. bubbles express like hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh -huh. But when you go to these time frames, you're you're seeing billions of dollars. Okay. I so see. the billions of dollars become targets because you're looking at a larger yeah. time frame. So it's the idea of internal versus external liquidity. So while this is actually the look back data does go back six days, so it is technically like a seven day time frame, but it's on the one minute. Uh, this one is seven days of data but it's just a heat signature version uh -huh. and you can only see higher time frames by going to this heat map idea so in the heat map idea like here on the monthly you have to see it change but the value is still the same you see the z the z number on my cursor it says yeah. 4.7 billion 5.2 billion so the billions are there it's just the value of what that color represents down here yeah. at the bottom left is different so it doesn't look like there's anything there but there are you know trades of billions of dollars just by comparison you have more up here because you have nearing 10 billion yeah. and so that color is more apparent like because it's turning yeah, yeah. aqua aquamarine and you could see mm -hmm. Okay, there's 10 billion at 28.6, 8 billion at 28.7, and they're like paving the way with liquidity for upside. And there isn't like liquidity above, like above the 30K. Yeah, above 30K, it's really sparse. And so this is where you get to get into the idea of at least thinking about a short or some sort uh -huh. of massive um, pullback. Swing. Yeah. 
because look what's down here at 18.6. These lucky campers, $48 billion <laughs> down here. They, they, so they came up and then they, they came down and they ate all of these guys that are like, I don't know. I'm going to say 200 billion. I don't want to total that up. So they ate 200 billion dollars. They had their fill. It happened to be a 618 of this impulse. Uh, so they they bounced off the 618 and then they they did it in such a bearish time when everyone was expecting lower yeah. that they nobody longed this entire path. So there's not that much liquidity in this this move cuz everyone was feeling doubt about it because of the yeah. bank stuff. So it was a perfect time for them to go grab it, and they did. And and they were just grabbing not just the three month time frame, but if you go to the yearly time frame, you have essentially like hundreds of billions of dollars. You had 178, oh. 110, 100 billion, 130, 100, 130, nearing 180, and they came and ate all those billions. That's what their target really was. But let me, let me I was ask surprised. Now. Let me let me ask you a question, brother. The only yeah. thing I don't get about that is that right, like when they were, everybody was talking about, oh, Bitcoin is definitely going to twelve k because there's liquidation out there. There's so much fucking, you know, money down there that they have to pick it up and blah blah blah. And it didn't happen, you know. Like, what what does that mean then? Then what happens to all that money that is still waiting on? Is it still there? Does it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like here, down at fifteen k, fifteen yeah. two, there was a hundred billion dollars that they yeah. just left oh, there untouched. Exactly. Exactly. So. so they didn't have to do anything, but what they were clearly doing was stacking stuff up here. Mm. So they were getting people to buy into, like they use it like a lure to yeah. induce oh, people to yes. keep, keep, keep the uh, trade open. Because if they just took everything, everyone's going to instantly close. All the fish are going to swim away. They don't want the fish to swim away. So they're like, no, we're coming to get this, I promise. And those are just the lucky fish that survive down here as they increase the pools up here mm -hmm. and then so <laughs> the double bottom idea at 19k was the biggest heist of the century because they just stacked all these bill hundreds of billions down here for them to just gobble up That's and then they did the same thing up here and so everyone was bearish and the, they're just coming to get what what was open since june last year so can we all say that the market um, makers are assholes? <laughs> they know how to, well, know it's how just, I, it's what, it's what anyone would do if yeah. you're in that position. So yeah. it's like, you, if you step into that mindset, it's just like, you know, there's going to be a bottom and a top to the pyramid and there's going to be, you know, bottom feeding fish and sharks. And, you know, wow. it's just the way the world works. I dig that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Nice. Very so, nice, yeah, man. No, I mean, that's why I would say it, it, it kind of like gets sparse uh, as we approach, you know, up, up above. So d will we go directly to 30K? I, everyone thinks so, which is why I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh I, I'm kind of like of the mindset that we, we kind of fade out and leave a little bit on the table before we go back down. But there's not really much down below either, though. So why would we go back down necessarily too? Like, there's not really anything except down at eighteen four, and that's a long journey down to get it. So I don't know. It's there. There are still trades up here at thirty four eighty billion up here, and all these old pools from you know back in uh, May of last year that they could come back to too. It's just hard for me to believe that we're in a bull market, but yeah, we could come back to thirty-five <laughs> k. It's weird to say that, but yes, yes, say it again, say it one more time, so that, so that everybody we could come back to thirty-five k because there's eighty-four billion up there, and I don't really, see, I mean, here is that's a hundred billion there down down at eighteen four though, and two hundred at fifteen, <laughs> <Bull> <laughs> 15 <two. laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah, so that's I mean that's why I love high block it's like it's like a cheat code cuz you get to see into where where the liquidity is without you know Still Yeah big, so. nice nice All right nice, that's man. about Thank it All right I'll catch you guys let Thank you, buzz brother. do his thing Yep Thanks man Here I'm going to somebody tell me real quick though if my music is too loud please Yes. Or not loud enough, or whatever. I like having a little music back there. 
Where is the music being played? On my stream. You have to like like stream volume or something, I think. Ah, I can hear it. Can you hear it? Is it too loud or no? It nah, sounds I I like it to be honest. Is it me though? I'm on. You guys want a little more? A little more? How about that? Still don't hear. <laughs> Still don't fucking hear. Is that Do you have a limiter on on some codec or something like? No, Are you using should, OBS or? No, not at all. It should be. I can't hear it a little bit, but. Yeah, I can only hear it very faintly. Okay, well, hold on. Let me. I'm going to try to right click on it and throw the volume up. Oh, I can. Know. No, but it's a it's a stream volume. It's it's a different volume thing. Like when oh, you're watching yeah. somebody stream, there's like stream volume in your little buttons or whatever. Yeah. We chilling though. It's good. Yeah. Everybody? Yeah, it's chill. It's chill. Okay. It's not blasting yeah. anybody's ears out. No, no, not at all, brother. It sounds perfect. Actually. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I just, man, I, I just want to go over a couple of, um, what you call it, some Forex stuff. I was going to just poke around Forex a little bit for anybody that, I guess the biggest thing, since we're all on the subject, is I want to talk about the dollar. And I'll tell you why I call bull trap. Um, because yeah, the dollar's at a rocket ship level for going up. It's and it's it's what it's gonna do. So so here's the thing, I had this big thing on here a while back because I posted a bunch of charts, you know, talking about a final low and whatever, you know, because I was thinking we were gonna still like come, you know, this is a little bit of a retrace and we were gonna get one more, um, but this is a really solid move and the break of this peak back here, this this break right here, um, is no longer, this is this is done. So this actually uh, is an obsolete sequence. We can get rid of that. Um, this five goes here. Actually, we need to get rid of this. And then I'll show you guys a little bit of some something on this. Um, because I had initially thought that this was the peak. Okay. Um, I know this is really messy. Don't pay attention to this. We're on the daily. So let me get rid of this, 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 this. I need those. Um, I need that. I'm not worried about this anymore. Okay. So uh, really, really simple here. There. That's all I really need to do. <laughs> um, so let me explain what, what that is. If you look at the weekly on the dollar, which... We don't have enough history here on, on Pepperstone or whatever. I mean, the dollar came from, you know, back here, right? Um, so just, you know, imagine the, the dollar coming like this, okay? Whatever. Um, but overall, the impulse wave was here. ABC correction, pretty standard, um, although it's a truncated move. Um, this is a really, really solid impulse wave to the upside, right? You got your one, two, and then a bunch of little starter waves. And then, I mean, this is this is weekly, right? So like in a month, the dollar is moving here. I mean, what was that? 8% in a month, month and a half? I mean, that's for currency and Forex, that's really, really, really solid moves. Um, and again, here, like from the low to the all time high, almost 10%. In the same amount of time, about two months, right? So, like, over the course of, like, four months, we went up, like, over 20% in four months, which is pretty massive for the dollar, okay? Um, so, I thought that this kind of was the end, uh, and that's why, you know, what I was expecting is a big corrective sequence like this. And me and Astro even talked a whole lot about this type of a sequence, um, and him and I were really in agreement on this, like 108, 109, 110 zone, right? Um, I'm not in agreement with that anymore personally. I haven't talked to him lately about it, so I don't know what his stance is. The problem is, um, there's not enough, you know, if we look at the swings, 
of the dollar because Elliott Wave relies on like swing sequences. Okay, swings meaning a swing from low to high in the RSI. We really never get back to the low here. Okay, so this tells me this whole thing is an impulse all the way to here, right? If we had created a low here and then came back up to a new high, then I would feel comfortable calling the entire sequence completed. But we never stopped. This is impulsive. I mean, we barely dipped below the halfway mark on the RSI, you know, over the course of the past like two years or whatever it's been. Okay. This final dip low, this is a really strong indication of, let me show you this. So for Elliott Wave, Let's use the weekly. The weekly is a lot better. Um, when you have an impulse wave, you also create an RSI trend, okay? And your impulse is going to continue to bounce off of that trend. When we break the RSI trend, we're letting us know that the third or wave three, excuse me, of the impulse is complete. So technically, where is it? Uh... This is actually another internal, excuse me. This needs to go here, and this needs to go here, and this goes here, excuse me, there we go. That makes more sense. Um, so we broke that down, but now what the RSI needs to do, uh, and on the weekly it hasn't done yet. It's done it on the, on the daily, but not the weekly yet. The weekly still has a long way to go. The RSI needs to come back up and get rejected off of this trend while price makes a new high. And then that'll signal the rejection because we'll have a bearish divergence here and here, right? So open-ended is bearish. It's gonna fall off the cliff, right? So anyways, we don't have this exact scenario on the dollar, right? So um, I've had to kind of change my stance a little bit here, which I don't like changing my stance. Um, I'm very careful when I do it. And I was calling uh, ES completed October 13th. Um, I'll get to ES in a minute, but overall, uh, what I see happening, let me get rid of all that shit, excuse me. Is the dollar is going to make a really nice impulsive move to the upside here um over the next couple of months this should be psych there we go so um and we may be really close to being done here um and let me explain what this is real quick as well because i use a volume pivot so you've got a really nice daily support box from back here okay um we almost tried to tap a weekly volume box as well uh, but we were able to really hold on to this daily. And now we've also created some daily resistance that we're bouncing from the nice wicks in here. Um, so it's been really, really, really nice. I don't think we're going to get much lower than this area in general. Um, the dollar should bounce in here. Okay. Uh, somewhere in there. Let me get a little bit more accurate. So the dollar should bounce there. Um, somewhere in this zone now what does that mean at least for me for bitcoin well you know bitcoin likes to move a little bit inverse of the dollar lately it hasn't been because the dollar is trying to find uh, uh, uh you know support and so the dollar has been weird so if you pull up um i don't even have Bitcoin. i haven't even fucking traded bitcoin in a while so forgive me if my chart doesn't even have that much on it lately. Um, oh, <laughs> I actually charted it out. No shit. Look at that. <laughs> I haven't even touched Bitcoin in a while. Well, fuck me running. That's pretty good. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was not. I was not far off actually. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm calling. I'm calling Bitcoin topped out here. Um, <laughs> it made a really nice extension. You know. Uh, we have a, a, an expanded flat uh, corrective sequence tier. And if you boil this back down to like a four hour, you know, you got your one, two, one, two internal. You got a three here. And then, you know, again, this is that, this is what I'm talking about. You know, these, these RSI trends, right? Um, and we've broken out of the trend, came back up, 
getting rejected off of this zone. Big divergence here on a on a on a, to the bearish side, right? So nice big massive divergence. I mean, you can still see, you know, it's possible the RSI to come back up a little bit here, but it's not going to surpass this peak at all. Okay, um, so the RSI can come up a little bit here, which is fine. Um, price may even try to, you know, climb a little bit more, but, uh, this is the, the next move. And I actually put this on here back on, what was it? What's today? Let's see. On the 13th of March. So 10 days ago was the last time I even looked at Bitcoin, um, calling out this sequence. So, um, I mean, it's to me. This is still gonna. This is still gonna play out. This this downward sequence. So, um, I think you're right, illuminated on the fact that you know, looking at that liquidity lower, um, we should be seeing a nice big drop, especially because the dollar is wanting to find support um, and make a run soon. Also, uh, you know, FOMC is what Wednesday, right? So. Those are always volatile days, and I'm willing to bet that dollar is going to find some strength in here, okay, or support, I mean, and then FOMC day is going to be the the big, like, I mean, we may even get, like, a bounce here to break this high and then a pullback, and then FOMC is just going to go, like, bang, dude. I mean, it's going to be a rocket ship because look at all of the short liquidity here that, that's been created on the dollar, okay? And I, I wish you could do a high block map um, for, for the dollar. But, you know, looking at candles, you can see where liquidity was created here. I mean, they tried to, to, to retouch some of it down here. Um, so there's a big liquidity box here, a build up and a drop, you know, because they're trying to eat up a lot of what was created here. So um, I would say that this is my, my big liquidity box. And this is right where I'm calling the third wave to kind of finish off here. I can't chart it perfect yet because two is not confirmed until we break this peak of one. So as soon as we break this peak of one, um, then, you know, I can pull a fib and, you know, let's say it's done here, for example, um, then three should end somewhere right up, right up around here. Okay. So just give you guys an idea of, I'm not trying to do a whole lesson, ah, lesson on Elliott wave. So y'all may kind of like, be like what the fuck's he talking about um but just talking out loud while i chart it so and if you guys this want to is something, I, just po ask. I posted uh what my indicators are showing on the dollar like the previous time we had a rocket ship you saw that surge uh just prior uh, and yeah we're just beneath a bullish trend based fib level mm -hmm. if we can reclaim that then you could see very similar i was just pointing the arrow down to the 618 way up at top there and it it's followed three-fourths of the journey so yeah well the, the dollars i mean i'm i'm pretty confident in this and and what it means for like es which is spx spy whatever you guys want to call it um what it means for uh equities in general is you know here's our october 13th lows i've been feeling really good about calling this a bottom um, even when the dollar makes the run, I, I don't know that this sequence is going to be valid anymore here. Okay. Um, we might push up about there.